Hello fellow peasants. So I just got done watching Friday the 13th part 5 A New Beginning. We're going to do a review for it right now. Okay guys, so uh, this is the fifth installment of the Friday the 13th franchise. I've been watching my little four pack. It's got like, you know, um, all the way from the first Friday the 13th to uh, Jason Takes Manhattan. These are kind of like the core eight films before, um, before the shit really hits the fan with this franchise. Uh, I mean, obviously Jason Takes Manhattan is garbage um but i don't care for jason x and i don't care for jason goes to hell um I, I feel like these eight films are the franchise they're the core you know jason films um what did i think of friday the 13th part five a new beginning it is garbage it is a horrible film um, there's almost nothing redeemable about the fifth film. Um, I will give it this. The cinematography is consistent still. Um, it's still nice to look at. They, it, it, it still feels like it's in that world uh, of the first two to three films. Uh, all the films have that similar look and cinematography. I don't know if they've kept the same cinematographer throughout all these films, or it's just um, the cinematography of the 80s is what is like keeping it um, similar throughout all these, but I'll give it credit on that. Once again, the black levels at night are nice. Um, but I'm not gonna give it much past that. I don't care for, I don't like um, the copycat killer thing. You know, I've seen this movie before. This is not This is like my second time seeing this movie. Uh, I didn't care for it the first time. There's little to no story. I don't care about Tommy Jarvis. I could give a shit less about his character. Um, I just don't care. I, and I know he's in the next movie, but I actually like number six. Number six is a good film, so I'm excited to uh, pop that one in here next and review that because I do like number six. Uh, but this is just, it's just a piss poor story. Tommy Jarvis is at some halfway house for criminals or people with psychotic uh, disabilities or something like that, that are being, you know, reintroduced into society. Um, and so he's kind of having some like trauma over the murders of Jason when he was younger or whatever. And it's just boring as shit. Nothing really happens. You don't care about these people. It's not a camp. It's not a, it's not Camp Crystal Lake. I think it's in, or in and around the same town because the guy who runs this place, you know, this facility for people, uh, no, not him, the cop, the cops in the town, the mayor of the town or whoever comes to the police and they're like, all these murders are happening. What are you guys doing about this shit? Small towns are supposed to be safe. And the cop is like, I know who it is. It's Jason Voorhees. Um, and the mayor is like, oh, what the, what, what the fuck? You know, I don't, like, you're smoking crack. I don't believe it. And, um, so I think it lives in that same world. I think it's still in the same town-ish, per se, same area. Um, the characters in this are just as dumb and meaningless as the ones in previous films. N none of these films are great by any means uh even the first film and second film the characters are throwaway these aren't made for great storyline these are strictly made for, to be slashers uh simply to rack up the body count and do different kills um 
I get where they were going with the copycat killer with this one. But at the same time, it's like Jason's supernatural. You can always find an excuse for Jason to come back. It's not like he's Michael, you know, um, where it's harder to explain what happened to Michael because Michael, you're not quite sure if he's supernatural. Um, but with Jason, he's, he is supernatural. Uh, the motherfucker is from hell or whatever, you know? And so, like, you can always explain it away how he came back. You don't really need a copycat killer. Um, the fat little guy, at the, the fat guy at the beginning who's eating the fudge bar, uh, he totally deserved what he got. He was a fucking, he was, a, he was annoying. He was a pain in the ass. Um, I don't think anybody who watches this movie likes that fat guy with the candy bar. Uh, so, so when he got, uh, you know, hit with the ax or whatever by the, by the, the other maniac, uh, I was like, good, shut him up. Um, all in all, guys, I, the third act was okay. You know, where this copycat killer's got the Jason mask on and he's chasing them around. And at the very end, uh, Tommy Jarvis is in the hospital after they've killed the copycat killer who was the EMT uh, in the town the whole time. It was just the EMT guy. And Tommy has this dream where he sticks a machete in the blonde chick who helped run the uh, the camp there. And he wakes up like, oh my God. And then she walks into his hospital room. If somehow, somehow the Jason Voorhees mask is in his in in his hospital room, and he puts it on. I don't know how the hell it got in there. It's like in a clothes drawer. It's in a dresser drawer in his hospital room. Anyway, so he puts that on. She walks in. He walks up behind her with the Jason Voorhees mask on. And they're leading you to believe that he's going to kill her. Uh, and then it cuts to credits. Horrible ending. Horrible ending. Um, because in the next film... Um, from what I recall, he's completely normal. He didn't turn into Jason. He didn't become a killer. You know what I mean? I, I don't understand. But like back then, they, they didn't care about continuity back in the 80s, especially for these slashers. Like, no one cared. No, no one, I guarantee a lot of people back in the 80s went to go see Chapter 6 or Part 6 or whatever, and it never phased them once. Like, whoa! What the hell's going on here? He's pretty normal. I thought he was, I thought he turned into the killer in the last one. This doesn't make sense. I just don't think people had that much, paid that much attention or cared that much. They're just like, ah, oh, I'll sit here and let my brain rot for two hours and I don't really care about continuity. I don't care about the story. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I can't, I mean, I understand these are piece of shit slashers, but at the same time, like I, you gotta kind of follow through on some things. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll have to see how, see if they even explain this away in number six, why he didn't become the killer. Um, I don't know. All in all, I did not enjoy the film. It was very boring. Some of the kills were innovative. Um, I liked where he tied his head around the tree and cranked it and like crushed his skull. Um, they do a good job in some parts making you believe that the copycat is Jason, mostly because of the stabbing up through the bunk bed. Jason likes to stab up through things. And uh, and the mask, you know, on the face and the bald head. But the bald head was even a mask that the copycat killer was wearing. So I'll give it that too. So I'll give it the cinematography. I'll give it... It was somewhat entertaining during the chase scenes at the end in the rainstorm. And I'll give it that they did do an, a good job at hinting towards it being Jason and leading you to believe that it was Jason um, in some parts. Uh, other than that, it was a horrible film. And I'll probably never care to pop it in again unless I'm having some sort of movie marathon with friends over around Halloween time or something. But I don't ever care to see this again. Um, let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you think this movie is hot shit or it's, uh, 
hot shit, hot garbage or whatever. Or if you love it, if you love this movie, if you love it, it's fine. All opinions are welcomed here, but I thought it was crap. So, all right, guys. Peace out, peasants. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.